Okay, hello guys. Could you please confirm that you can see me and hear me? Good afternoon. We can see and hear you. Okay, great. So guys, uh, let's start. I will share my screen and we will begin. Just a moment. Excuse me. And as for slides of the, uh, let's call it a zero, lecture uh we didn't get any in our lms maybe some really? okay lms Thank problems you for me i will check it mm -hmm. i will reupload them okay i have constantly okay I, i'm also constantly having problems with lms uh, thank you very much probably i will reupload them not only in lms but also in our ms teams uh, service so that you could have access to it okay so let's continue uh guys do you see my screen we do Okay, great. So, ladies and gentlemen, what we will discuss today, guys? Mm, uh, actually, we will uh, try to analyze what uh, a business model is. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, tried to uh, understand what is it uh, during our previous lectures uh, within this minor, but our today's lecture will be completely dedicated to this uh, to this uh, idea, actually. Okay, uh, the term business model is used over uh, all uh, business literature, but unfortunately, uh, its uh, content is somewhat too bad. We have to clearly understand what it is uh, in order to be able to uh, effectively uh, implement it in our uh, everyday business life. So, guys, what is a business model? A business model can be defined as an architecture of resources that a company uses in order to create value, deliver it to customers, it obviously value, and transform it into a company's revenue. So here we see that business model covers three key aspects of any business. First of all, each business has to create value, obviously. It has to create value, which will be a source of its future income. And in order to get this uh, income, uh, the company has to deliver this value to its customers and to transform this value into uh, this company's revenue. Uh, for example, for example, uh, what do we have in case of Uber? How is created value in case of this company? What is the source of value in case of Uber? <coughs> so they are creating a platform uh, to, um, to make uh, customers uh, communication with their drivers. Okay, okay. Uh, but what is the key source of value in case of uh, Uber? Okay, platform is obviously important, but are customers really interested in this platform? No. What customers are interested in? In uh, satisfying its uh, his or her needs. In what? Uh, in transportation. Absolutely correct. So, in case of Uber, in case of Uber, uh, what does Uber do? Uber uh, creates value by simplifying uh, information exchange uh, between uh, customers, between okay, between passengers and drivers, and simplifying access of passengers to uh, to cars, to cars with with drivers. How is this value delivered to customers? This value is delivered via the platform, obviously. And how this value is transformed into company's revenue. Obviously, a part of the payment for this value is transformed into a, re into a revenue stream for Uber. Uh, 
So, uh, so uh, in case of Uber, the key source of value is uh, transportation services, obviously, and the uh, key source of revenue are passengers' payments for transportation services. This value is delivered via what? Via Uber own platform. Guys, is it clear? Yes, it is. Okay, great. Okay, uh, okay, okay. So let's continue. Let's continue. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a business model can be uh, conveniently described on the business uh, on the uh, on the basis of this canvas. Uh, this canvas was developed a lot a long time ago, actually, if I'm not mistaken, in 2004 uh, by Professor Oberwalder. Uh, but well, uh, this uh, canvas represents uh, the key aspects of each business model. So in the center, we have value propositions, the source of value for the customers, the key aspect of each business model. On the left part, we have key partners, key activities, and key resources. This aspect represents infrastructure, resources that uh, a company uses in order to create value. Uh, on the right part, uh, to the right of the value propositions, actually, we have customers. So uh, this part of the business model describes how company uh, delivers value to its customers. Here we have customer segments, customer relationships, and channels. Channels which are used to deliver value. And uh, at the bottom part of this, uh, of this uh, scheme, we have finance. We have cost st structure, so how much resources has a company to spend in order to create value. And revenue streams, uh, how the company gets value from its customers, what is the key source of its revenue. So, uh, so uh, this, um, this uh, general structure of business model can be described on this slide. So we have infrastructure, key activities, key resources, and partner network. We have value proposition, offering so what a company offers to its customers. We have customers, obviously. Uh, here we have to analyze customer segments, channels, and customer relationships. Probably uh, the most important thing in the modern business uh, because uh, we have to understand how we have to cooperate with our customers. And from the point of view of finance, we have to analyze our cost structure and our revenue streams. <coughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, here we have here we have a general description of your future analysis uh, of your uh, of your uh, companies of your presentations actually for seminars. Actually, you have to develop an idea of a business, um, or probably you you maybe uh, you or probably you uh, prefer to use uh, the existing uh, the existing project, and you have to analyze it from each key aspects of this business model canvas, offering infrastructure, customers, and finance. Guys, is it clear? Do I understand it? Yes, it is. Okay, great. So, what about value proposition? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the simplistic point of view, value proposition can be described as a collection of products and services that the business offers to its customers in order to solve their problems. <coughs> As you understand, each business has to solve its customers' problems. Uh, so, from the uh, technical point of view, uh, from uh, from the technical point of view, uh, value proposition includes products and services that the company sells on the market. But from a more detailed uh, point of view, we have to understand that value proposition should be distinguishable from competitors' offer. <coughs> so, value proposition means what additional specific value does a company create in comparison uh, with uh, its competitors? Uh, obviously, this, uh, these additional features are related to products and services, uh, but products and services, uh, how should I say, uh, they are a basis of the value proposition, but the value proposition uh, is uh, the key parameter of value proposition 
is distinctive uh, features that distinguish this a uh, product uh, and service from competitors offer. Guys, do you understand? Is it clear? <coughs> yes, it is. Okay, great. So, mm, we should not analyze uh, from this point of view uh, technical features of products and services. We have to analyze the key of value of these products and services for our customers. And there are actually two basic sources of value, quantitative and qualitative. From the quantitative point of view, customers are interested either in price or efficiency. So they are, uh, <coughs> sorry guys, I got a flu, so um, I have a cough. So uh, from the quantitative point of view, customers are interested in having either a lower price or a higher efficiency. Probably a combination of both, uh, a, slight, a slightly lower price and a slightly lower, uh, a slightly higher efficiency. Uh, for example, for example, in case of IKEA, what is the source of efficiency? What is the source of value actually? <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, IKEA, the famous Swedish uh, supplier of, uh, of home goods. Maybe uh cheap but uh decent goods okay so in case of ikea mm, we have price we have a lower price so the key advantage of uh ikea is a lower price okay so in case of uber obviously uh the key source of value is a lower price not only the transportation service itself but the price of this transportation service, which is much lower in comparison with traditional taxi services. Guys, do you understand? Is it clear? Yes, it is. Okay, great. <coughs> From the qualitative point of view, uh, in this case, price and efficiency are not so important. Uh, here we have customer experience. Uh, uh, customer experience, so uh, experience, uh, impression, um, actually, uh, that customer will get thanks to our service, thanks to our company. How do you think? Uh, uh, are there any examples of uh, products, of brands probably, which are based on customer experience? Maybe um, films industry. <laughs> Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. What else? Guys, how do you think? Lamborghini, it is about a lower price or it is about customer experience? Definitely not a lo lower price. <laughs> Absolutely correct. Okay, uh, it may be about efficiency actually because uh, Lamborghini are sport cars. Okay, so that uh, they are much faster in, in much faster in comparison with uh, normal cars, so to say. But definitely the key aspect of uh, Lamborghini is customer experience. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we should not uh, uh, we should not think that quantitative aspects exclude qualitative ones and uh, vice versa. Obviously, obviously, customers will not be eager to pay too much for their customer experience. Or well, this customer experience should be a really very, very exclusive one in order to uh, make customers uh, pay too much money. But normally, normally, customers uh, prefer uh, a decent combination of quantitative and qualitative features. But one of these feature, uh, features will be uh, dominating. Is it clear, guys? Do you understand it? Yes, it is. Okay, great. So let's continue. Let's continue. Key activities. Most important activities in executing a company's value proposition. Ladies and gentlemen, in case of Uber, what do we have? Okay, we know that Uber helps customers to get access to transportation services. Okay. The key source of value in case of Uber is a lower price in comparison with traditional taxi services. So, what are the most important activities in executing Uber's value proposition? 
obviously it is uh, the platform uh, the uh, company the company has to organize this platform so that uh, so uh, so that um, uh, customers could without major uh, major uh, expectations i would say uh connect with uh drivers and get access to transportation services if this platform is not efficient from the economic point of view the price of this service will be too high or or uh customers will have to spend too much time into resources uh, and, uh, and too much resources in order to get access to drivers and obviously in this case <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, and obviously in this case, uh, the total efficiency of Uber will be destroyed. Is it clear, ladies and gentlemen? Do you understand? Yes, it is. But uh, what uh, can be named uh, not key activities for Uber? How do you think, guys? Any ideas? Ladies and gentlemen, maybe some kind of improving the interface of the app, but I'm not, not exactly, sure. not exactly. These activities are, are crucial. Actually, guys, uh, what do we have? Uh, do you know the idea of value chain? What is a value chain? Isn't it oh. uh, the uh, sequence uh, how the value is delivered? Okay, how it is produced and delivered. Okay, so um, we have logistics, we have production, we have supplies, etc., etc. Well, but obviously there are some activities which are less important to us. Uh, for example, in case of Uber, what it will be, guys? Again, how do you think? It is very easy to understand. For example, some back office activities, which are hidden from our customers, which do not uh, really impact uh, the efficiency of our uh, company, but which has to be performed in order to make our company run. Do you understand it? Yes. Okay. So let's continue. Uh, key resources. Uh, resources that are necessary to create value for customers. Again, what resources uh, do companies normally use? There are uh, financial resources, as you understand. There are human resources. There are uh, intellectual resources, brand, etc. And there are physical resources, as you, uh, equipment, buildings, etc. In case of Uber, how do you think which type of resources is the most important one? Can we say that uh, the drivers uh, who use uh, Uber uh, platform uh, for work are resources of Uber? Obviously, uh, obviously, but this uh, okay. Actually, it is a very uh, specific case because, as you know, uh, drivers are not Uber's uh, employees; they are formally independent. But technically, they work for Uber. Uber relies on its drivers, and they can be considered as human resources. What else? Maybe some. IT resources, so I'm intellectual sure resources. To... Absolutely correct. Uh, Uber's digital platform is uh, an example of uh, digital intellectual resources. So intellectual resources are very important for uh, for uh, Uber. What else? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, just a question. What drivers have to have in order to be able to deliver transportation services to its customers? A car. Maybe driving license. 
Okay, yeah. driving license, That's absolutely true. correct. It is, it is a requirement for drivers, you are right. But I actually meant uh, cars. So in case of Uber, we have to uh, use not only drivers, but also cars. Cars are not supplied by Uber. Uh, cars are supplied by drivers themselves. So we have to uh, use uh, uh, our digital platform in case of Uber. We have to use, uh, we have to use uh, cars and we have to use drivers. Okay, in case of, uh, for example, McDonald's, what type of, of resources are necessary to create value? <coughs> Human resources? Absolutely correct. What else? How can we name them uh, like uh, places uh, for operating? So, like uh, building resources? Okay, physical resources, actually. So, we have to have a restaurants, as you understand. So, we have to have buildings. It's quite normal, okay? We have to have rooms, so to say. What else? Are intellectual resources uh, important in case of McDonald's? They are used, but uh, but uh, not that important as for Uber. Okay, so you would like to say that a McDonald's brand is not so important? Uh, okay, from that point of view, yes, <laughs> it's very important. Okay, intellectual resources includes uh, IT. Uh, intellectual resources include not only uh, not only uh, IT resources, obviously. They include intangible assets like brands, technologies, etc. And as you understand, in case of McDonald's, it's uh, very important, uh, very important, uh, because McDonald's is based on its brand, and it's uh, and it is obviously based on its recipes. So uh, intellectual resources are definitely important for uh, McDonald's. Okay, what about Tinkoff, guys? What can we say about Tinkoff? I believe uh, intellectual uh, resources uh, take the um, major part in Tinkoff company. Okay, intellectual resources, absolutely correct. Uh, platform, technologies, uh, processing, etc. What else? Are human resources really important? Um, maybe just in uh, uh, service uh, support, but not more. <laughs> Okay, there is an area which, uh, okay, in which uh, human resources are important. It is about uh, technical support, absolutely correct. Uh, what else? Physical resources are important. Just a little. So uh, they uh, don't have many offices, as uh, usual uh, banks have, but uh, they have uh, many... ATMs. Absolutely correct. So physical resources are not so important for uh, Tinkoff. Uh, they do not have uh, traditional physical buildings, so traditional physical offices, traditional physical outlets. Uh, they copy, uh, they uh, serve their customers via their, uh, their uh, smartphone app, via their uh, phone services uh, in some cases, and obviously via their uh, website. Uh, but they run their own network of ATMs in order to uh, provide customers with access to cash and in order to be able to accept cash from customers. So, so uh, uh, there are, uh, the key aspect of um, the key aspect of Tinkoff resources uh, is uh, obviously uh, okay uh, intellectual resources, uh, but in some uh, in some fields of activities, uh, Tinkoff has to rely on human resources uh, like technical support and on physical resources like ATM network. Is it clear, guys? Do you understand it? Yes, it is. 
<laughs> uh, we should understand, guys, that Tinkoff, I have mentioned during our previous lectures, Tinkoff started as an absolutely virtual digital bank. And it used a kind of a roaming, a kind of roaming for its customers uh, who uh, wanted to uh, take money from uh, their accounts. Okay, uh, what I mean by a roaming? Uh, think of customers uh, were allowed to use ATMs of other banks. But the system proved to be uh, not so comfortable for Tinkoff itself uh, for the, for its customers, uh, because uh, because it was difficult for Tinkoff customers to uh, okay to send money to Tinkoff to send cash money uh, to send cash money to Tinkoff uh, to pay uh, credits for example etc. And this is why Tinkoff started its own uh, network of ATMs in order to provide a better level of services for its customers. So uh, it clearly demonstrates that even digital banks may have to use some physical infrastructure. Guys, is it clear? Do you understand it? <coughs> yes, it is. And I uh, suppose that a fully virtual bank may, well, maybe just uh, for now it's uh, more like a fairy tale. <laughs> Okay, uh, technically, uh, technically, uh, it is not impossible to devise a really, a really digital bank, uh, but in this case, in this case, this bank will have to use only uh, digital cash or only digital money. Uh, because, okay, uh, because uh, this bank will not be able to accept physical cash, as you understand it, and it will not be able to provide its customers with physical cash either. So, in order to use this bank services, for example, you have to open an account, I don't know, with uh, Sberbank, for example, and to send your uh, non-cash money to this hypothetical bank. So, it is not very comfortable for customers, and uh, most probably this bank will have problems with uh, its competitors. Uh, technically, as I have already said, it's not impossible, but from the formal point of view, it will be not comfortable for customers. Okay? Okay. So let's continue. Let's continue. What else? Okay, partner network, guys. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, now it is very difficult for a company to have all resources uh, it may need to deliver value. Uh, this is why companies have to cooperate with external economic agents. And uh, the obvious example is Uber, as I have already said. Uh, Uber ensures uh, efficiency, it ensures a lower price for transportation services, but Uber does not deliver, uh, does not deliver uh, transportation services itself. It has to cooperate with a huge network of independent or quasi-independent drivers. The same is true for most platform companies like Airbnb, uh, etc. Uh, okay, uh, so, uh, so, um, it is true for uh, traditional physical companies. For example, Boeing and Airbus don't produce their, uh, their uh, airplanes themselves. Okay, they uh, assemble uh, airplanes, but most spare parts, most components are purchased from external suppliers and so on. Uh, and so on. So, uh, we should understand that uh, in order to be able to deliver value, we have to cooperate with partners. And again, uh, again, we have to clearly understand who our partners may be and should be. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, is it clear? Do you understand it? Yes, right. it is. Okay, great. So, let's continue. What about customer segments? Now we go to customers. Uh, probably the key part of uh, the, the key part of our business model canvas. Our customers, our customers can be divided into different segments. Do you remember what uh, what a segment is? We analyzed the uh, notion of segments during our uh, lectures on um, on digital marketing, but I'm not sure you remember it. What is a segment, guys? As I uh, remember, it's a um, narrow um, 
group of potential customers maybe uh, diversified by age by gender by um, I don't know habits of a uh, consuming uh, so the company concentrates on uh, providing them with uh, some goods and services okay so uh, what okay what I would uh, specify in your reply actually you are correct but I would uh, like to develop your idea a little bit ladies and gentlemen what we mean uh, when we say a uh, customer segment actually actually there is uh, okay there are all customers all potential customers on uh, the market technically each person uh, who has money uh, is able uh, is able to purchase our product but obviously not all our customers okay not all potential customers will be uh, real customers for our company and obviously we are not interested in all customers which are uh, available on the market <coughs> So we have to divide um, this um, this set, okay, this um, audience of customers into different segments based on the uh, based on different criteria. Uh, key criteria are uh, key criteria are mm, uh, income, uh, mm, consumer preferences, uh, demographic characteristics uh, like age, uh, gender, etc., and geographical location. On the basis of this criteria, we define, uh, we identify uh, key segments which are present on our market. And after that, we try to define which segments are the most interesting for us. Because it is not possible for us to divide, to uh, to cover all potential segments. For some customers, our products will be too expensive. <coughs> For some customers, our products will not be convenient and so on. Some customers will not simply be able to purchase our products because they live in a different uh, region uh, and so on, so on. So we have to identify um, which segments are the most attractive uh, for us. Probably, probably the key segments which are available on the market are mass market, mass market, so uh, general audience and niche market. We uh, try to concentrate on a specific niche uh, on persons uh, with specific requirements. Guys, do you understand? Is it clear? Yes, it is. Okay, great. Okay, so, so let's and continue. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> something like ecosystem um, structure tries to cover more segments than the very company. good, very good, uh, very good idea, very good point. Uh, thank you very much for having mentioned uh, that. Okay, in case of an ecosystem, what do we have? In this case, we uh, use a strategy of diversification. We try to uh, we try to cover as many customers as possible. This strategy is is not impossible. And now, actually, it is probably the most popular one, but only for giant companies. As you understand, McDonald's will not be able to uh, implement such a strategy. It will be possible for uh, ecosystem companies like Tinkoff in, uh, in Russia, MTS, I don't know, Sberbank, etc. Uh, but in case of uh, more traditional companies, I mean uh, traditional from the point of view of their size, not uh, ecosystem companies. Okay, they have to select segments because they are not able to cover all possible segments. Okay, <coughs> is it clear? Yes, it is. Okay, uh, so let's continue. Channels. How we deliver the value to our customers? So, what ways can be used to deliver the value to our customers? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there are many ways to uh, deliver value. The first uh, and the most traditional one is uh, direct sales. So we have our own shop, our customers come to our shop and we sell our product to them. So that's all. We can use, we can use uh, a network of big uh, wholesalers, uh, wholesale companies. Uh, 
but it's not impossible either. So uh, this model is implemented by, by uh, big producers of mass market products, like Danone, for example. Uh, it is impossible for Danone to directly uh, sell its products to each customer, obviously. Uh, Danone delivers its product uh, its products to a wholesalers like uh, retail chains in Russia, and these retail chains in Russia uh, resell uh, Danone products to final customers, and so on. We may use we may use a network uh, a network of small independent sellers. Okay, uh, ladies who are present in our course will easily uh, remember um, some uh, cosmetics brands uh, like Mary Kay, for example, or Oriflame. <coughs> that rely on this model, a network of small independent uh, sellers, uh, P2P sellers. Guys, is it clear? Guys? How does exactly uh, work uh, P2P? Okay, in this case, in this case, what happens? Uh, Oriflame, do you know this brand? Or if I'm American, yes. Okay, well, how do they uh, work? Maybe some ladies from our course will help us. I'm sure that you have ordered products from these uh, companies, right? Yes. Any ideas? Any help? Uh, as I know, a person can distribute uh, pro some. Uh, products of uh, Oriflame uh, among uh, their uh, friends and uh, so on. It's, it's person to person. Person to person, absolutely correct. Uh, actually, uh, this, uh, uh, Palina, thank you very much for your explanation. What I would like to highlight, uh, the uh, cosmetics sales were rev revolutionized by Mary Kay uh, brand, if I'm not mistaken. Traditionally, cosmetics uh, beauty products uh, were sold through uh, specialized uh, shops. But what did Mary Kay do? Actually, it was a real, uh, a real lady. She decided that uh, it would be much more logical to uh, to sell uh, these products from friends to friends, uh, because okay, uh, friends uh, believe each other; uh, they can be easily convinced if uh, they are satisfied by the quality of products. And obviously, in this case, the cost of sales will be lower. There is no need uh, to uh, maintain a network of uh, shops. And okay, uh, indeed, indeed, uh, small uh, small uh, retailer. Uh, small independent retailers may purchase uh, products directly from America in small amounts and redistribute them among uh, their uh, network of uh, friends. Uh, Nikolai, do you understand uh, how it works? Mm, yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> So, uh, so uh, it's how it's how it goes. So this model is very efficient. Uh, this model is very efficient, um, and okay, it is very popular. Uh, thanks to this, uh, Oriflame uh, avoids to have huge distribution costs, and it uh, it has a pretty decent uh, level of loyalty because products are sell uh, products are sold on P two P basis. But obviously, this model is not uh, okay. Uh, these three models: uh, wholesalers, uh, independent uh, P2P sellers, uh, direct sales, and so on, are not uh, are not uh, the only ones that are possible on the market. Uh, there may be longer chains of distribution, producer. Were big wholesalers, local wholesalers, uh, local retailers, and so on. Uh, there may be obviously uh, digital channels of distribution, which are becoming uh, more and more popular nowadays, and so on. So, so uh, your key task is to understand how you will deliver your uh, value to your customers. How you will use your, uh, how, how should I say, how your value will be delivered to your customers in the most convenient and the most efficient way. Is it clear, guys? Do you understand it? Yes, it is. Okay, so.
what else what else mm, ladies and gentlemen uh the final point in case of uh, customers uh is customer relationships it is a very important thing uh in this case you have to answer three questions how the business will get new customers so how you how you plan to attract new customers what will be the tools uh, that will be used in order to uh, start cooperation with new customers? How the business will keep the customers purchasing? Sometimes it is not so important. If you work with the flow of customers and all customers are always new, uh, okay. It <coughs> <coughs> oh. In this case, there is no need for you to keep the customers purchasing. For example, for example, if you are a tourist guide, I don't know, uh, I don't know, um, in Sevastopol, for example, in Crimea. Okay, in this case, you don't have to keep the customers purchasing. Tourists use your services just once. And after that, they forget about you, you forget about, uh, you forget about them. So in this case, in this case, you don't have to keep the customers purchasing. But the key point for you is the first question, how you will get new customers. You still have to attract new customers. Uh, but in most, in most cases, uh, the second question is also important. How you will keep the customers purchasing? You ha you'll have to build up loyalty. You'll have to build up the constant interest of your customers uh, toward your products. And obviously, how the business will grow its revenue from its current customers. So how you can convince your customers to spend more money on your products. Guys, do you understand? Is it clear? Uh, could you please give an example of the uh, third um, point? Okay, so how we can make our customers interested in purchasing more from our uh, company? For example, making specific offers. For example, making target offers. For example, adapting our uh, our uh, offer for uh, specific customers etc so in this case in this case our customers may decide to spend more do you understand it it doesn't yes. mean that our customers will have to pay a higher price for the same product okay it will be good for us but uh, customers will not really like it our goal is to make our customers to spend more and in this case, uh, in this case, uh, we can make specific offers for our customers so that uh, they could purchase more products from us. And in this case, obviously, they will spend more. Is it clear? Yes, it is. And uh, maybe introducing, uh, implementing some new uh, products will help. Why not? With Why not? Obviously, obviously. Okay. Uh, so we, we can cost, we can replace some older products with the new ones, and in this case, our customers may shift to new products. And okay, in this case, we'll obviously decide to buy these new products. It will it will increase our revenue. Why not? It is absolutely possible. Absolutely correct. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Let's continue, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the key five types of customer relationships are first personal assistance. What do we have in this case? It is the traditional model of uh, service sales, uh, which is typical for, okay, um, retail sales, for example, in case of uh, home appliances. In this case, we get a direct help from sellers. <coughs> Uh, we can get additional information. We maybe uh, can, we maybe can get uh, an additional discount and so on. So uh, we as customers are assisted by a specific uh, person um, from the company. Is it clear? Yes, it is. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean that we will be always assisted by this person. We visit this shop, for example, or this restaurant. Okay, we are assisted by a seller or by a waiter. Uh, we leave this uh, company, okay, because we got our service. And next time when we visit it, there will be a different waiter or a different seller. But nevertheless, in both cases, during both our visit, uh, during both our visits, we will have a personal help 
from a special person. Is it clear, guys? Yes, it is. Dedicated personal assistants. Any ideas what it, <coughs> what it can mean? <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, maybe some kind of personalized assistance. So we can't hear you now. Are you okay? okay sorry, guys. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, personalized, not exactly. What it means? Okay, uh, not exactly, but not uh, incorrect either. What, what does it mean? In this case, there is a specific person within a company which is in charge uh, of a specific group of customers. So in this case, we have a constant person which is in charge of your business within the company. For example, in case you go to a clinic, uh, you, have a you have a specific person which will, uh, which will, uh, which, uh, will uh, okay, who will be your personal doctor, so to say. And in this case, in this case, okay, uh, each time you come to this uh, clinic, you will be served by this doctor. You are assigned to a specific person within this company. You don't have to switch between different uh, staff within the company. You always have the same person which is in charge of you. Isn't it clear, guys? Now it is. No, or now I didn't hear. You. Now it is. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, so uh, in this case, in this case, okay, uh, it is much easier for you to get uh, uh, the service. Because, okay, uh, the person with the company knows your preferences, knows your problems, knows your way of, of communication, so on. And you can easily, uh, how should I say, uh, this person can easily understand you and you are uh, comfortable with, uh, with this person. Okay, normally you should be comfortable. Okay, self-service, what is it? Uh, so, uh, it's uh, the... <coughs> structure of uh, service when the customer mm, <laughs> namely uh, services him or herself so like in uh, in some grocery shop where customers are free to take whatever they want and to buy it okay absolutely correct in this case in this case uh, what does a company do it provides customers with tools and resources which can be used uh, in order to get the service uh, by the customer himself or herself. So, uh, in this case, we do not invest into staff, we do not invest into uh, persons who will be in charge uh, of our customers. Our customers will be able to get the service themselves. What is the advantage of this approach? Our customers do not have to communicate with external persons. They may uh, get the service at their convenience. Obviously, it is very, very good. But sometimes, sometimes this service will not be appreciated by our customers in case of problems and so on. So, so service uh, in most cases should be uh, assisted by some technical support from, uh, from the company. But in most companies, our customers uh, will uh, be happy to get uh, service themselves. Okay, in some cases. Always in case you go to a clinic, okay, so service uh, can hardly be recommended. But okay, in case of Sberbank Online, self-service is absolutely okay. Do you understand, guys? Is it clear? Yes, it is. Okay, automated service. What is it? So it's like uh, the uh, personal assistance uh, service, but uh, not with a, with a real human, but with some bot. Okay, actually, it's a combination of self-service and automated personal assistance. Absolutely correct. So we have to do a lot of things ourselves, uh, but uh, the system can adapt to our requirements, to our preference, and so on, thanks to automation. Absolutely correct. And co-creation. What is it, guys?
What is co-creation? Is it, is it about uh, the situation? Oh, um, for example, <laughs> uh, you go uh, to some uh, specific restaurant uh, where <clears throat> uh, you are supposed to, uh, I don't know, to cook your own meal with uh, the chief. Okay, very good example. Actually, why not? Why not? Okay. Uh, uh, but co-creation co uh, means, okay, technically, all right, in case of co-creation, customers can participate in, um, in creation of the final product, in creating uh, the final product. Uh, so uh, it means that customers are important, uh, are important uh, as sources of idea, as sources of resources, and so on. So in this case, the company includes uh, customers into the process of value creation. Why it is good? In this case, uh, in this case, the company can save money on using resources. Mm, okay, we do not buy resources necessary for development of our product from external companies. We ask our customers to help us. Why not? It is a very good idea. And on the other hand, Customers who participate in creation of uh, products, obviously, uh, they will be happy to adapt the final products uh, to their requirements. And which is much important, customers will be eager to purchase um, uh, to purchase these uh, products because uh, these products correspond to their requirements. Guys, do you understand? Is it clear? Yes, it is, but uh, could, could you please uh, give uh, some extra example of uh, that kind Why of... Why not? Okay, the... uh, board games. Board games. Do you know what is it? Board games. Yes. Uh, so, in case of board games, uh, this, uh, these products are often developed by small companies uh, who work for a niche audience. Uh, sometimes these companies do not have enough money to publish uh, these board games, so they often use crowdfunding to support uh, to support edition of these games. But uh, very often you can use this information on the internet freely. Uh, companies invite potential buyers, potential users, potential future gamers of these board games to participate in development of the mechanics of this game. And, co and customers often, okay, not all, obviously not the whole potential audience, but some dedicated uh, customers may participate, may participate in development of technical features of this game, in the development of design of uh, personages, uh, in the development of uh, magic rules and so on. And after that, after that, uh, thanks to this collective intelligence, games uh, become more interesting for customers and Customers are more eager to appreciate them because uh, they um, they see that these games correspond to their requirements, to their expectations. Is it clear? Yes, it is. Okay, great. So let's continue. Let's continue. Uh, finally, we arrive, to, uh, we arrive to the finance, cost structure. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to understand uh, three, uh, two key parameters of cost structure. First of all, types of business structures, and uh, second, characteristics of costs. Characteristics of cost. In case of business structures, uh, we should differentiate between cost-driven uh, uh, structures and value-driven structures. What is the difference between, uh, between them? Cost-driven structures, cost-driven businesses strive to uh, save money, strive to reduce cost. The best example uh, are uh, the so-called low costers. Do you remember what is it? Low costers. Yes, we do. What is it? What is uh, it? So it's a type of uh, a, a company. Mm -hmm. Airlines. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, which uh, provides its, its customers with uh, cheap uh, flights. Huh? And uh, as I can uh, remember, uh, the main reason why they can do that is uh, new planes and not, uh, not uh, so uh, broad 
spheres of lights. <laughs> okay, so uh, technically, technically, they uh, can cu- uh, they can cut uh, their costs uh, thanks to uh, okay a specific approach uh, specific approaches towards selection of uh, airplanes absolutely correct and to- towards the geography of their flights, but the key task of their companies is to reduce cost because if they fail to reduce cost, there will be no more low costers obviously. So low costers have to cut or cut costs okay it is crucial for them uh value driven companies are uh, okay lamborghini again uh, uh lamborghini uh customers uh lamborghini customers are ready to pay for the value of these cars uh they do not care too much about the cost of these cars so uh value driven companies uh, create additional value probably emotional value personal value for their customers in case of uh, <coughs> in case of cost driven companies they have to cut costs in order to uh, increase uh, the efficiency of their products for their customers guys do you understand is it clear yes it is okay great and what about the uh, characteristics of cost okay guys uh, do you remember key types of cost Fixed cost, uh, variable cost, and so on. Uh, fixed cost, variable cost, and like average cost, or <laughs> it's okay, not let's from here. About average cost. Okay, what we should understand, guys. In case of uh, uh, okay, there are two types of cost: uh, fixed cost and variable cost. Uh, and uh, in case in case of uh, vor- in case of fixed cost, uh, okay, uh, okay, the proportion of this cost in the total cost may be different. Uh, there are uh, companies which uh, strongly depend on uh, fixed cost, so the development of the product is mostly based on fixed cost. Uh, for example, in case of software, in case of software. Actually, it is a very, very costly to develop a software. But as soon you developed it, uh, production of any additional copy of the software cost uh, almost nothing to you. Is it clear, guys? You can just copy the file and mm-hmm. that's all. Is it, is it, do you understand it? Yes. Okay. In some cases, in some cases, variable cost is very, very important. For example, in case of transportation companies, they have to spend a lot of fuel, a lot of uh, salaries for their staff, and so on. So, in case of transportation companies, uh, variable costs are very, very important, and they try to reduce their variable cost. So, uh, you should understand what type of cost is important for your company. Uh, and on the basis of this, you should obviously uh, devise the price of your company, uh, the price of your product, and the financial policy of your company. And here we arrive to the final point of this topic, revenue stream, revenue streams. How we can create value for our customer, oh, sorry, how we can create value for our uh, company, how we can extract money from our customers. Okay, the first and the most traditional way to do so is uh, asset sale. Okay, in this case, we simply sell physical products to our customers. We sell, I don't know, food when we are, uh, okay, when we are a food producer. We sell cars when we are a car producer, and so on. So, asset sale, it is about sales of physical products. Guys, is it clear? Do you understand it? Yes. Okay, great. Usage fee. What is it? In case of usage fee, we take a payment for the service we get from our uh, customers. For example, Почта Россия. Okay, uh, it is based on usage fees. We pay for uh, we pay for delivery of our mail. Guys, do you understand it? So uh, the company uh, takes a payment for. Uh, providing its customers with uh, with uh, their uh, delivery, I don't know, capacities. 
something uh, okay. like that. Okay. Actually, you're absolutely right. Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, the Poshta Rasi provides us with uh, delivery capacities, with logistics capacities, and we pay a fee for getting access to these capacities. Technically, you're right. Okay? Okay. Subscription. Okay, what is the difference? In case, in case of a usage fee, we pay for a specific service. We send a letter and that's all. Uh, in case of subscription, we pay for a continuous service. For example, in case of Netflix or in case of our uh, internet access or mobile phone uh, services, we don't pay for any specific call, for example. We pay a subscription for a given period of time for a given amount of services, for example. Is it clear, guys? Mm, yes, it is. But at uh -huh. the same time, uh, there are some services or... Uh, there were uh, some services uh, which uh, took um, payment for each film. So why not? Why in, not? In that case, it will be a usage fee. Right? Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you should understand that these types of uh, revenue streams are not mutually exclusive. We can uh, we can create a company which takes you. Uh, <coughs> Sorry, which takes a usage fee for some services and a subscription for other for uh, other services. It is not impossible. Okay. 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 Lending and renting. In this case, we are a kind of rent a service. We rent a physical asset from <coughs> from a company. Car sharing is a good example. In this case, we do not purchase uh, a car. We simply rent it for a given period of time. Is it clear, guys? And uh, what is the difference uh, between lending, renting, and uh, subscription? So, uh... okay, look, look. Uh, in case of Poshta as I have already said, you send a letter, but you have no physical results, so to say. <coughs> you simply pay for the delivery. <coughs> and you pay for one unique service, just once. In case of subscription, for example, in case of Netflix, you get a monthly access uh, to uh, movies. In case of renting, what happens? In case of renting, okay, uh, we rent a car from a car sharing service. Technically, uh, okay, we do rent it just once, or I don't know, for one hour. Technically, it, it, is, it is similar for uh, usage fee, because we rent it only once, okay? You say that it may be similar to subscription. Okay, in case we rent it for two days, okay, in this case, um, in this case, it may be similar um, to subscription because uh, it is a longer period of time. But what uh, what is essential in this case? We rent a physical asset. We use a physical asset. In case of subscription, this service is not is uh, non material. In case of usage fee, the service is not material either. Do you understand? It? Is it clear? Okay, so uh, as for uh, asset sale, it's about uh, physical products. Usage fee and subscription, it's uh, about uh, some kind of services which are not mm -hmm. connected with uh, mm -hmm. physical products. Mm -hmm. And lending, renting, it's one more time about physical assets. Uh, technically, yes. It is about services based on material assets. Okay. Uh, but, uh, Nikolai, uh, don't try to uh, clearly define all these uh, types of revenue streams. Uh, they may be uh, mixed and sometimes uh, borders uh, borders uh, between them may be pretty blurred. Sometimes it is very difficult to understand whether we have renting or subscription, for example. So, uh, technically, this, um, these terms uh, can be used to better understand the nature of your revenue streams, but sometimes, as I have already said, they clear meaning of these terms uh, in the case of your precise company may be pretty blurred. Okay? Okay. Okay, so let's continue. Licensing, what is it? Any ideas? So, giving a right to somebody to, to do something for some period of time? 
Absolutely correct. For example, uh, for example, uh, you authorize a person to do something. Uh, absolutely correct. And the uh, person and this person pays for this right. Absolutely. Uh, okay. In case of franchising companies, for example, what we have. Uh, in case of McDonald's, as you know, McDonald's is a franchising company. You remember it. So most McDonald's restaurants are run by external uh, by external companies. So in case of McDonald's, we have to uh, we have actually two key revenue streams. We have what? We have asset sales uh, because McDonald's sells uh, products, okay, uh, in its uh, own restaurants, and we have licensing uh franchise fees which are paid by external restaurants who are uh, that are authorized to use a mcdonald's uh business model is it clear guys do you understand it ladies and gentlemen so uh by buying a license uh from mcdonald's we give uh we are given the opportunity to to use the logo absolutely correct uh many mcdonald's restaurants as i already said they are franchised ones so uh they are technically independent from the uh general uh okay from the uh main company and okay they are just authorized to use to use mcdonald's uh business model not only the logo but the whole business model <coughs> okay Okay, brokerage, what is it? Any ideas? Alexander, it seems to me that you want uh, to, to say something. No? Okay, brokerage, what, what, what it means, guys? Uh, in this case, in this case, the company uh, gets its money by matching to uh, by matching to economic uh, agents. For example, there are real estate agencies, as you know. Uh, there are persons who want to sell their property, and there are uh, persons who uh, would like to buy a property. And what do uh, real estate uh, company uh, companies do? They simply match uh, potential buyers with potential sellers, and they charge a commission for their services. Guys, is it clear? Do you understand it? Can we say that they are providing? Uh some information some addressed information okay technically you are right technically you are right but they provide information services okay they provide a lot of technical support actually but basically they are based on information exchange All right okay okay, okay so uh, so advertising what is it in this case, in this case, we uh, get our uh, revenue from advertising. Uh, so uh, there may be potential customers of our company. For example, in case of Contactia, uh, Contactia uh, is oriented towards uh, ordinary users. So uh, people who is uh, who are interested in publishing their information on the web. Uh, but uh, these uh, customers, uh, these customers do not pay anything for these services. Okay, they may pay for additional benefits like a gift and so on. Uh, but normally, but normally, all contact services are free of charge. Uh, Contact gets its money from advertising from external companies that advertise their products on uh, Contact social media network. Guys, is it clear? Do you understand it? Yes, it is. Okay, so, uh, okay, technically that's all about business models and that's all for today. Guys, could you please tell me, uh, in case of Uber, what is the key revenue stream? How do you think? For Uber. Asset sale, usage fee, subscription, lending or renting, licensing, brokerage or advertising. I believe uh, brokerage. 
Absolutely correct. It's brokerage. Uh, Uber matches uh, matches uh, drivers and passengers, and it's uh, it's uh, charging a commission for these services. Absolutely correct. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's all for today. As I have already said, do you have any questions? Guys? Um, uh, so we've uh, discussed the points of um, how, what's it called, uh, business model canvas, right? Absolutely correct. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, as I see, as I see, uh, most of students that are present now in our MS Teams group are Russian speaking. Am I correct? We have a, we have eight participants in this uh, in this uh, class, and I guess uh, according to your names, probably I'm mistaken, but uh, I hope I'm not. Uh, most uh, all, okay, all students who are present in our class are Russian speaking, right? Yeah. Okay, guys, uh, as I already said, our lecture is over. Uh, may I switch to Russian to provide you with additional comments? Yes, of course. Хорошо, коллеги, ну что ж, тогда я попробую вам сказать, чтобы не было потом никаких недопониманий. Вот, соответственно, что вы должны сделать? Возвращаюсь к э, началу нашей э, лекции. Смотрите, ваша задача будет, как я уже сказал, придумать некую компанию или использовать уже существующую, и на каждом из отдельных семинаров э, раскрыть часть э, аспектов этой компании по инфраструктуре, по э, предложению, по customers and и finance. То есть, соответственно, ваша задача будет разобрать вашу компанию со всех сторон. Вот. На следующем занятии мы поговорим про цифровую составляющую деятельности, которую тоже нужно будет включить в вашу презентацию. Окей? А, про цифровую я еще здесь нет. Верно? Я сказал на следующем занятии, Николай. Ну, да, да, да. Я просто именно про структуру. Хорошо. И то есть угу. к каждому семинару по вот, ну, условно, к первому про инфраструктуру, да, потом... Скорее и... про ценность. Это, это ключевой момент. Угу. Окей. А в следующий четверг будет э, только лекция? Просто семинары в, следующий четверг, будет... в следующий четверг будет только лекция. Потом у вас 10 февраля начнутся семинары, которые будет вести э, Георгий Быковский, Георгий Владимирович Быковский, если не ошибаюсь. Вот, э, вы с ним отстреляетесь какое-то количество семинаров, и потом мы с вами продолжим в следующем модуле. Будет опять э, 5 часов лекций и э, 10 часов семинаров. Угу, хорошо. Еще вопросы? Можно все-таки еще раз, а я чуть-чуть не понял. То есть мы просто идем а, сверху вниз, верно, по разделам одна презентация. Ну, как бы. То есть... Да. Угу. Окей. Может быть, я там немножечко изменю, но если будут изменения, я об этом предупрежу. Еще вопросы? Нет, коллеги, к сожалению. Еще вопросы? Все на этом, да? Хорошо, коллеги, uh, тогда большое спасибо за участие. Окей, okay, uh, I go back to English. Okay, thank you very much for your participation. Thank you very much for your questions. And see you next week, guys. See you, bye-bye. Have, nice, uh, have a nice evening and have a nice weekend. Thank you. Goodbye. See you guys. Bye.